Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max. And... I did not enjoy this. And the thing is... It's really kind of weird. I think that this movie has a better plot overall than kind of what we got in the 2017 cut of the Justice League. But the thing is, that cut was like two hours long. This is four hours and two minutes long. And it is a slog. And the biggest issues that I pretty much had that came out of what was going on with like the original Justice League are still present here because you are still introducing Cyborg, Aquaman, The Flash, and now that we learn in this one, Martian Manhunter in one film while also resurrecting Superman. So let's distill certain things and then kind of go into certain changes, I guess, because this is strange in the effect that I'm essentially reviewing the same movie, but done differently. And of course, this is truer to Zack Snyder's vision, and I will definitely acknowledge that. And uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm really into Zack Snyder's kind of brand of filmmaking, to be honest with you. Mainly probably within the DC universe, because what I usually see and what he really kind of focuses on is more of the kind of deconstruction of heroes, like kind of what he did in Watchmen, which that worked for Watchmen because that was a deconstruction of heroes. He mainly wants to focus on like the nightmare version, and I'm like, okay, if they had just let him go off the leash and do whatever the fuck he wanted, that that's cool. But if you're attempting to build a DC universe to combat what Marvel's doing, you don't kind of start off with that. Now, that's not a... It's not a completely un like unsolvable problem with DC because of their more reliance on like the multiverse. Not that Marvel doesn't use the multiverse, but it's just nutty. Because I did like Zack Snyder's remake of Dawn of the Dead. I liked 300, and I liked Watchmen. But the thing is, his style on this, it's just... It feels so bloated at this runtime, and that is like the biggest crux of the problem that I have on this. Honestly, once you start getting into like the four hour time frame for a movie, you really need to start looking at what editing needed to occur. And they just fucking let him do whatever he wanted. And this is the result. Not saying that we don't need the things that are in here, but it's Cyborg stuff needed to be its own movie. The Aquaman stuff needed to be its own movie. The Flash stuff needed to be its own movie. And fucking Martian Manhunter needed more than just to pop up strangely in weird places and not even help. I mean, granted, their case can be made that he did kind of help getting Lois Lane out of her house at a certain point, but her daily routine that we had seen sporadically throughout this entire runtime would have had her at that place anyway maybe just not at the time that was pretty much needed but i don't fucking know it's oh all i know is that i'm watching it and i'm thinking this should have been kind of edited down into four one hour parts like the miniseries that we had potentially been getting through now granted there is the case to be made that i could have paused at certain places and paused at the different kind of like setups that they had because it is divided into chapters and everything uh that is a valid one i could have done that uh, thing is i kind of wanted to do it in one shot and kind of get the whole kind of experience and not knowing like how coming back to it would kind of like affect it but that's one thing i will acknowledge that i could have stopped at it and that's valid. Um, I did also have certain technical issues with buffering with it. At certain points, it would just be like, all right, cool. 
It wasn't horrendously, but when I'm trying to watch through a four-hour movie, four-hour and two-minute movie, and that lengthening in it, it's like, ugh. I did take a break at one point to kind of, like, get up and stretch my legs and everything. It's just, even doing it in, like, sizable chunks, I don't think would change kind of what the fundamental problem is of this movie. And that is, it is too much for one thing to kind of handle. That was one of the criticisms I had with the 2017 cut. Because they are attempting to build the Justice League without putting in the origin movies for these other characters. What does that mean? That means you have to devote time for Cyborg's story to get more information on him, Aquaman's story, Flash's story, and then screw over Martian Manhunter. I know I'm harping on Martian Manhunter, but the issue... It's funny. They fleshed out those three and then created another issue that was pretty much in the original cut by having him just, like, randomly. I'm like, okay. All right. And we do get better villain motivations and understanding with this. That helps. I consider that important because that is supposed to be the main plot of this movie. And it just spirals. Because the main gist that was of the 2017 cut is Steppenwolf has come and wants to unite the Mother Boxes and pretty much herald the arrival of Darkseid and do all these other kind of things. That's the overall gist. And that is what's here. However, we get more information throughout the whole runtime of more motivations on Steppenwolf's part rather than he's just a big dude and can like throw down shit. Interestingly enough, in the original one, he seemed kind of underpowered. In this one, he is OP as fuck to a certain extent throughout the vast majority of the movie before, of course, they get Superman involved and then for some reason, even though, like, Aquaman and Wonder Woman should be able to not completely probably take him down, but should be able to, like, fuck his shit up. Once Superman gets involved, this dude gets fucking cracked on like ain't nobody's business. Um, so, we got the kind of gist. We got, of course, Batman assembling the team to fight this. Um, how do we want to go about this? We get, like, in the beginning, like, more extended, uh, journey of Batman to pretty much go searching for Arthur Curry. We even get a changed-up shot, well, changed-up way of how that kind of interaction goes down. But we see that it goes more of, like, we get these wide shots and these cinematic shots, and I'm, I don't mind those, okay? The problem presents itself of what is it adding to this? It's like, okay, I understand Batman is just, like, traveling on a horse because he's got to go to this out of the way fishing village okay and we get those kind of stuff going throughout it's like all right so we get some slight changes and variations on how certain scenes played out versus what was going on in the original one like him talking to this like old dude trying to get in contact with of course aquaman he's like screw your money and shit like that but like, yeah, I don't really care about the world, man. Whatever, I do my shit. I do my own shit alone, so whatever, Batman. I don't care. Goes off in the water. We get some people singing a song, and I'm like, okay. And then Batman goes off and pretty much tells Alfred that he struck out. And evidently, we get more of an idea that he's been doing his Batmaning thing for like 20 years. So it's nice to get that kind of frame of reference. Um,. Another important kind of thing is we do get kind of jokes throughout this, but it's definitely more of Zack Snyder's kind of style. It's not as quippy or whatnot, and you can definitely tell the difference of, like, different kind of writing style. It's not bad or worse. It's just like, oh, okay. Thing is, once you start getting through, like, a certain rhythm, and <laughs> going through this, like, four-hour time frame, you're just like, okay. Not that I found any joke was bad. It's just like, oh, oh all right. We're getting this, we're getting that. Okay, moving on. So, 
he's doing all that kind of stuff, trying to prepare for what's coming. We get an extended look of Steppenwolf's whole thing. Oh, in the beginning, we get that evidently Superman's dying uh, shout is what wakes up the mother boxes. This, of course, then sets them off being like going crazy. The biggest one being, of course, the one on Themyscira with Queen Hippolyta. This is where Steppenwolf shows up in his strange Iron Man-esque armor. I say it's Iron Man-esque because as we see, it like goes porcupine attack mode. And we get this whole battle scene that's even more extended than in the original one where, for some reason, they're pretty much trying to enclose him in the stone dome place that they were keeping the mother box. And their idea is to smack these pillars to keep closing the doors. I'm like, he came in in a boom tube kind of, uh, some kind of otherworldly transportation system. He can just beam himself out. And evidently, like, closing these doors or whatnot as Hippolytus is, like, trying to escape with the box so that way he doesn't get it. The thing falls into the ocean. Like, the cliff that it is attached to starts falling into the ocean. We don't get shown or told why this is occurring. I mean, granted, this dude has, like, potentially earth-shaking powers, but, like, it, it doesn't... We're getting 2 plus 2 equaling 5 because we don't have the other accurate information to see it. It could be a nitpicking thing, but it's like, okay? And then he, like, does, like, this flying jump out with his parademons and continues on and is able to get the mother box from them. Flies off. We get a better scene of there was this kind of radioactive kind of town. We had a family in the first Justice League cut that is not here in this one. He just, like, uses it as the mother box kind of holding place and is able to commune with this Desaad dude. And we learn a little bit more that he is looking for this Unity thing because he was involved with this coup against Darkseid, but he's trying to get back in favor with him. Uh, he's done this for, like, 50,000 worlds. He's, like, got 50,000 more to, like, go through and this is just their kind of thing. And uh, we learn throughout as he's gathering, of course, more of the mother boxes that Darkseid is looking for the anti-life equation. And this, if you learn this equation, will allow you to control all life within the universe. So ultimate kind of bad guy kind of thing. Um, I don't have much to say on Darkseid because mainly we get him stuff in flashbacks and then him talking to Steppenwolf being kind of like, overpowering and being like get me my prize he wants the anti-life equation um mainly we see him in the whole kind of thing as they're explaining that dark side had come to the planet before this was known as the defiance because uh the new the gods like zeus and Ares, uh the atlanteans the amazonians and like even a green lantern primordially popped up and they're like fighting him the green lantern got like shit cacked by uh uh dark side and had his hand like cut off the ring was almost like going towards him but it like flew off somewhere else so that was just mainly a tease of the green lanterns um but then dark side got like really fucked up by uh the gods and Ares pretty much putting a battle axe in him as he was like dragged off and like shit he got fucked up we pretty much see that as like diana has her whole wonder woman thing and the school field trip that's extended out to where her little girl's asked if she's okay and if she can be like Wonder Woman someday and Wonder Woman uh, responds, yeah, you can be anything you want to be. Like, All right, because the terrorist group was just like, yeah, we want to put everything back to the Dark Ages. It's like, okay, that's it. But see, the thing is, this is so long and this is setting us back up with Wonder Woman. It... It's just a little kind of thing. It even kind of like plays it off like it doesn't really matter. It's just mainly to showcase Wonder Woman's power set, who she is, and what she can do. Okay, that's effective. We're all right with that. Uh, though it does beg the question, uh, when she was trying to like knock out the one dude, she used her like god powers to kind of do that. 
and it just looked like it should have like pretty much taken out like the building with what it was doing. I was just like, oh, okay, all right, moving on. Um, so Diana then goes back to her job at a museum, sees that her mother Hippolyta has pretty much shot off a uh, flaming arrow. She goes there and we get more information on what was going on because we did get a flashback but Diana is led to a room that like talks about dark side and everything and what was going on so that's how she gets that information is able to relay it to other people she hooks up with uh, Bruce he's like yeah I'm pretty much striking out here at the moment but she's like gives him the information and all that what's going on um, so since they kind of struck out with Aquaman, they're looking into the other kind of people. This leads us to pretty much our, I will turn them kind of visionettes. We get into stuff with Victor uh, Cyborg and Victor Stone and Barry Allen. Cyborg and Flash. Um, Cyborg's is more examined where we see that he was a very smart kid. He was more in tune with his mother because his mother showed up for his like football games he actually hacked in to try and help out his uh, uh, fellow classmate because she was doing poorly because of like situ uh, personal situation and everything, showing kind of like his heart. He, of course, and his mother got involved in a car accident. He's got a very troubled relationship with his father. This, I do agree, is better than what we got in the original Justice League cut because it's too vastly different kind of takes on Cyborg. That one was playing if he even had like a soul and was the same kind of person being brought back. Which, I think, is an interesting kind of story for them to explore, but it was done crackily and executed shittily. Here, it's more of his father kind of turned him into a monster, and he has a tough relationship with his father because he's always working and all that. But, my problem here is that this is good, but it should be its own film, so that way we don't have this being plopped in when we are dealing with another of what I would term would be the important plot. The fucking Steppenwolf trying to destroy the Earth and find the anti-life equation for Darkseid. But he is connected with the Mother Box because the Mother Boxes are like strange tech from like another universe or whatnot, and... We learn later in the movie that they are change engines, so they can change things due to whatever their master's will is. So it's interesting that we have to figure out who the master is and when they're fucking around with shit. Let's see. Mother boxes were pretty much split up to one Atlantean, one Amazonian, one human. He got the Amazonian one. He is able to pretty much figure out where the... Atlantean one is because he's able to send parademons out and they're sniffing out. They evidently have the scent of those who are in proximity of the mother box. That's not very well explained. It's just like, okay, I don't know how you could do that, but all right, go for it. I can understand that they could get a little bit from that because of taking the mother box from the Amazonians, but it's like, uh, all right then if they could figure that out, why didn't you just have parademons just like spanning the cosmos and then one could just like pop up, accidentally get near a mother box and go on with that. But of course, that's just one aspect now. Uh, so the stones had the man one and now you've been fucking around with that one. That one doesn't really get back up into kind of play until later on. Barry Allen, we see about his, we get, he gets less than Cyborg. Cyborg gets the bulk of it because we see that everything with his father, uh, his father telling him about what his abilities are because he can interface with pretty much anything. Pretty much picture him like Tony Stark, but where he is the suit, he can like go into anything. He can like do stuff with nuclear missiles if he wants. He actually goes, we see this whole little thing where he helps out this waitress who is having money troubles and everything and trying to do her best for her family and all that. 
Uh, it's a good humanizing moment for Victor Stone. It's just like, yeah, it feels like they could have done a little bit more with that. But again, the main plot is the Steppenwolf thing, and this needed to be its own movie, and that's that. Barry Allen, we see his father is in prison because he has been framed for the murder of his wife, Barry's mother, and he is trying to do whatever he can to uh, get his father out by, like, pursuing a criminal justice degree. His father's like, stop that, live your life, do whatever. We see him trying to apply for, a, like, all these jobs to, like, pay for that and saves this girl, I, I think it's Iris West, Iris West, from a car accident that had occurred, mainly a big showcase of his, like, speed powers with the speed force. Um, but, of course, he then goes back. Batman was set to, like, get him in. It pretty much plays out similarly to uh, the one in the original Justice League where Barry's, like, asking the questions versus, like, the suit you've got is pretty much, like, for a shuttle for, like, uh, getting into orbit and out of orbit for heat and everything. Uh, he, of course, throws the bat around. He's like, oh, you're Batman. Uh, he's like, I'm putting together a team. Yeah, I'll stop you there. I'm with you. He's like, oh, okay, cool. He's kind of giving him a lowdown. He, of course, talks about how his powers is he's rich. Uh, Diana... Uh, tried to look into Victor. Uh, they meet. Victor's like, what do you want? She's like, I know you're dealing with shit. I've dealt with shit. Uh, losing loved one and everything, but Victor's like, fuck the world, and flies off. We also see that he knows that the mother box is vulnerable and decides to bury it at his mother's grave. This is important because the parademons has been like taking people from Gotham and take, of course, Silas Stone, Victor's father, uh, to some place pretty much underneath and what's going on underneath like Gotham Harbor it's just kind of weird little place they're getting information of what's kind of going on since somebody got to look at them uh, Jim Gordon like tries to get in contact with Batman so they show up to try and figure out what's going on Victor of course shows up at the bat signal as well because his father was taken so they team up to kind of go out that way at this point we also have gotten Aquaman stuff where he kind of gets in talking with Mira and it's really kind of strange because Aquaman technically comes after this and Mira's accent is so weird and her hair is so different it's really muted colors versus what we get and like the Aquaman one and we also get long haired William Defoe pretty much being like what the fuck does Volko look like here pretty much telling him to take his place in Atlantis also getting in contact with Orm or uh, Ocean Master the one who would be lead, like his half brother that we see in Aquaman it's just really kind of weird like uh you talking or what you'd think that they would be doing something because the motherfuckers try to be like, I'm going to destroy the earth. And it's like, uh, yeah, that's kind of an important fucking thing, but whatever. But Steppenwolf is able to get the Atlantean mother box, even though it's never showed why he would be able to breathe underwater like he's doing. Or to be, uh, like, I don't mind since he's like an outer space motherfucker, if he could like breathe in a vacuum or not need a lot of oxygen and like, water or whatnot, but it's never explained why he's able to, like, beat the unholy shit out of all these people and using his fucking battle axe like a boss. Um, I, and the thing is, I don't need a, like, in-depth explanation or whatnot. There's a balance of showing and telling that's needed to be done, and I just don't think this one follows that very well. Um, that... He, of course, keeps getting updates and all that. He had gotten a vision about the anti-life equation being on Earth. He had relayed that because that's when getting the two mother boxes. He does also get to talk to uh, Dark Side. He's like, oh, a prize. Um, so they're going off to save the hostages. Stephen Wolf is inter interrogating them for uh, the mother box. And it kind of similarly plays out, except more with the Zack Snyder kind of flair, 
muted kind of color and different kind of like songs throughout and we just keep running into that thing of like certain songs work you have to be careful with how you do your songs because I'm like oh, okay I see you using the songs that you like and what you want to work here I, I'm just not that much into it because we get it's almost like sometimes they do like Batman's theme Wonder Woman's theme like other different ones themes trying to like keep them in concert of what's going on here it's like like Ugh! and while this is going on we also get into like flashbacks of not flashbacks but like interspersed stuff of like Lois Lane dealing with the grief of losing Superman uh Martha shows up and tries to like be like hey get back in the land of the living all that kind of shit and it's Martian Manhunter who's a uh, Secretary of Defense Swannick uh and that's about it it's like wait what the fuck alright but that's kind of bringing it up later because they battle Steppenwolf and they aren't able to beat him too bad like they still need some kind of ace in the hole to kind of like deal with him because Cyborg's able to take over like this crawler kind of thing that Batman had to kind of like shoot missiles at him but he uses one of the missiles to take out uh, a weak section of a wall boom tubes out and they're pretty much going to get like swamped with water but Aquaman pops up and like yeah we kind of have to deal with this shit uh, so their idea is to pretty much use the mother box to bring back Superman because they need something to turn the tide and they do recognize that this is a crazy ass fucking idea to do but they do it anyway so they pretty much get uh, uh, cyborgs like well let's get to the uh, Kryptonian ship do all that kind of stuff we get some kind of funny moments as they're kind of like digging out Superman's body it's like what the fuck Barry's like uh, bonding with uh, Cyborg which was pretty nice being like hey I think I got a shot with her uh, no I'm like kind of young he's like she's like 5,000 years old all men are the younger men it's like yep and because that pops up to like uh, the end of like the defiance thing <sighs> let's see so they pretty much get that way they're able to evacuate the people, so that way they're able to do it. Um, Victor is attempting to do this and is interfacing with the Kryptonian stuff, and he sees that it's a bad idea, has the kind of like nightmare vision that shit would go down, Lois would get killed, and become enthralled by Darkseid and make an apocalyptic kind of world, kind of like Apocalypse, Darkseid's world. Um... I understand trying to show that like bad things can occur, but... Snyder seems more interested in that version of events than like what we're going on with here. Granted, if he was given enough time, he might have gotten there, but it's like, okay, it's really kind of weird. It still pops up towards the end. Um, so Barry pretty much charges himself up because they need to turn the mother box on to pretty much get this shit going downside is once they activate the mother box Steppenwolf will be able to know where it's at and come and get it they're able to do it Superman kind of blasts out Steppenwolf uh, is attempting to get the box as they're dealing with Superman because he's brought back and he's got no memories it's like he's rebooted they kind of duke it out a little bit but luckily enough Lois was coming around to do her like usual goodbye to the monument and everything and is able to stop Superman and then they fly off to the Kent farm which Martha has left because she was behind on the payments and he's able to get himself back into uh, get his memories back and everything uh, his mother showed up kind of got together with him got everything settled out and he's pretty much ready to get back into the game However, while that's going on, Stephen Wolf's trying to get the mother box, and Victor's father, Silas, takes it into one of his uh, experimentation chambers to use a laser to pretty much heat it to a point where they could be able to track it. And unfortunately, he dies in doing this, and it's in front of Cyborg, and he's heartbroken that his father's dead, uh, even though he's had a complicated relationship with him. So, Stephen Wolf goes back to his base, puts the other mother box in, and starts to attempt to do the whole unity bit. They ride off with their uh, 
bat troop transport plane to kind of go over there and figure out what they need to do and kind of get down, settle up on their game plan and you know, pretty much like, all right, all right Victor's going to try and interface with things, Barry's going to charge him, charge him up, uh, run around, boop him in, he should be able to pull it apart then. Well, Superman, of course, gets back into the Kryptonian ship, goes into the uh, black and silver kind of outfit, because that is usually kind of what happens after he got back from uh, the whole Doomsday bit. Having the whole kind of bit of him hearing his stuff from the past, from his uh, biological father and Jonathan Kent, as he then flies off and gets ready to do battle. We then go into the end game portion of the movie where Batman blasts his way in and is trying to take down the shield so that everybody else can get through. We got our heroes doing various kind of things. We have Batman pretty much using... He kind of gets, like, screwed over. And as is, like, uh, Batmobile blasted up a lot and takes, like, guns from the parademons and just, like, goes around and does that. Batman kind of gets sidelined in this one. Uh, we see Barry pretty much trying to dodge stuff and everything. Uh, Cyborg doing his thing to get into position. Wonder Woman recognized, same as uh, Aquaman. Uh, we see Barry pretty much charging himself up. Victor's able to get there. Uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman pretty much are trying to like hold off Steppenwolf. And the thing is, he's pretty much getting ready to take out Victor because Barry's kind of gotten fucked up a little bit to actually hit Victor. But that's, of course, when Superman comes in and says he's not impressed because the axe goes down on him and doesn't do anything. He does uh, blow, uh, use his super cold breath to shatter the axe. That was a cool Superman moment as he then starts, like, whooping ass with them and it completely changes as they're, like, wrecking it. But Barry is able to pretty much charge him up. Well, thing is, we see a boom tube portal to Darkseid as he's, like, waiting for his victory and everything and the thing is Victor's unable to do it and it pretty much blows up revealing the anti-life equation etched on the earth but Barry's able to use his speed force to turn back time not Superman style like uh, Christopher Reeves where he like uh, round the earth it's literally in Barry's power set to be able to move faster than the speed of light now granted since this isn't that long of a time frame of time travel since it's pretty much immediate and he kind of had to move fast enough to not get completely and utterly destroyed by the blast he doesn't need something like uh like the cosmic treadmill or whatnot to set him off down that path but he's able to do it sets victor into it superman and them are able to kind of like fuck uh stefan wolf up royally pretty much before they like cut off one of his things uh superman's able to help uh Victor, uh, separate the mother boxes, similarly to the end of the original Justice League. Um, and they pretty much throw Steppenwolf through the portal. Uh, Aquaman stabs him with his trident, uh, and Wonder Woman chops his head off as he then falls in through. Dark says, like, uh, yeah, get everything ready. We're gonna do this old school way and invade Earth like that. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. Then we get various kind of things as, like, people shake out. Um, Batman pretty much uses the old way manner to try and do a Justice League vice. Um, let's see. Of course, Bruce helps uh, Martha Kent get her house back by buying the bank. Um, what else am I? four fucking hours and it's just a lot of shit um I'm just trying to get the important shit cause that kind of just shakes out like that um uh, we did get a little bit of stuff with like Jim Gordon a little bit but that was past there when they were trying to figure out what the fuck the parademon shit was um trying to walk through what's going on they had their kind of like cool moment where they're all assembled on the top of the kind of reactor thing. Um, I don't know. I was beat by the end of this thing. And we see that Batman has... We see like an epilogue where we get certain things shaken out. Um, like evidently Lois is... Uh, 
I think pregnant because Bruce said congratulations to him or whatnot. Um, then we kind of get set up with the whole nightmare bit and just showing that like dark side like evidently Lois is the key for some reason we see the armored up flash and everything uh oh yeah other one here we go the other epilogue kind of thing um Lex Luthor escapes uh Arkham Asylum they linger a little bit too much on the dude that's like bald laughing crazily and that he's on his yacht escaped and he uh Deathstroke uh wait uh not wait <laughs> Slade Wilson is uh like hey what do you want to like, well, want to have like a partnership kind of thing I'll tell you something because evidently he's going after Batman tells him that Batman's name is Bruce Wayne and then we get into the uh nightmare kind of thing and Slade Wilson is working with Batman in that scenario granted I understand pretty much world ending shit happening but it's like okay he's pretty much ready to kill him in that scene and that kind of thing or go after him and then he's like alright we're going then we get Batman and the Joker pretty much having their usual kind of thing and that Batman promised uh, Harley Quinn as she was dying that she would he would kill the Joker as slowly as possible okay I'm gonna have to watch out before he comes and we see Superman come in in his normal colored suit with uh, his laser eyes getting ready to go. And that's when Bruce wakes up from the nightmare and we see that somebody else has popped up. Martian Manhunter pretty much congratulating him on bringing everybody together and all that. But, I mean, he doesn't fucking really help him out other than to have sent Lois Lane to calm down Superman. Now, I understand, like, in different kind of drafts or whatnot, could have changed, but I'm like... These are the two main things. Like, yeah, can I join your team? He's like, yeah, sure. Just call me Martian Manhunter. It doesn't really even like explain why he's called that. Then he just kind of flies off, and it's like, okay. Now, it's just mainly down to execution. This didn't need to be this long. And if it did need to be this long, it needed to be done in a better way, so that way... Uh, I would almost say that there should have been like three mini episodes that dealt with Cyborg's backstory, Aquaman's backstory, Flash's backstory, and if we're gonna include Martian Manhunter at all for any kind of thing, do something better than this because it's bigger than a cameo but like worth almost nothing in the grand scheme of the actual kind of plot happening. It's mind-boggling to me. And this is someone who enjoyed watching the animated stuff. I'm like, all right, I know who Martian Manhunter is. It's just like, if you'd seen, if your first exposure to him is this, you'd be like, what's the big kind of deal with this dude? He just fucking like can shape shift and fly at this point. Why did he do anything else? It's just so weird, so weird. And then maybe do something and just like set him. Because the biggest issue is the main plot is, like, Stephen Wolf doing all this kind of stuff. That's the big kind of villain thing going on. And then there's just so many subplots that you actually do need, but that just is put together in such a way that just makes it a slog. You're like, okay, you get some plot movement, and then you have to go through the backstory because this person's going to become important or whatnot. And then you go this, 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 and then you finally get back to that. It's... Oh. I just did not enjoy it. And if you enjoyed it, good. I understand that the fans have been wanting this for years. And if this meets your expectations and gives you the story and the characters that you want, I am truly happy for you. Honestly. I'm glad that you got this because, honestly, Zack Snyder's vision was screwed over. And that's not right. Okay? I'm glad that this was able to be done. But this is just not my kind of thing. I'm like, I don't need a Marvel-fied DC universe. I would just want something that's really close to what's going on with the characters. And there's certain aspects that, yes, they do hit on. But it just overall doesn't feel right 
for me with these different characters. It's like, oh, okay, I understand Batman's supposed to be the brooding one, and Superman's supposed to be this, like, icon and symbol, and Wonder Woman is that I another icon and symbol for what's going on, and Barry's doing all these different kind of crazy things. And I know that Cyborg is kind of like a newer kind of addition to that kind of thing, so it gets kind of nuts. And I like the idea of revamping Aquaman to this certain extent as well. It's just... I do not like his style. I do not think he understands the characters that he was supposed to kind of like get into. He did the characters that he wanted to and tried to put as much of what he thought he wanted from the source material as possible. That's my feeling from it. All right? I that doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Just that's the jive that I get from it. And if you don't get that, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool, man. No beef. Um, so, would I recommend this to people? Um, if you're a Zack Snyder film fan, definitely. If you're a DC fan, if you've been happy with DC's movies, and Zack Snyder's movies, sure. If you didn't like what was going on with like Man of Steel and then Batman vs. Superman and what's been going on with all this no I would not recommend this especially four hours to either do it one sitting or even one hour increments if you want to kind of break it up or even break it up like the uh, chapters or parts that it is broken into um, now granted now I have the idea of what he was going for, and I'm just not into it, man. But we'll have to see kind of what this does for these kind of films, because with what was going on with the original one and then getting this, I am curious to see how well this does and if uh, we will get more kind of companies listening better to consumers to kind of make these things. Uh, because even though I'm not enjoying this, if there's enough people out there that are enjoying this and getting that full effect of what they got, that's a win, all right? You know, <laughs> so we'll have to see how this kind of goes with those kind of things. Um, I'm just tired from it, man. It was a long movie. And I don't mind long movies because I like the Lord of the Rings Extended Editions that actually helped because it's figuring out value add and I just think it was the whole structure of skipping over important things and then trying to rush to this kind of Justice League movie without doing the groundwork of the other movies to set up these characters so that way you can just have them established then establish their relationships with these people and have the plot working at a better kind of pace Ugh. So those are my opinions on the movie. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.